Hey everyone out there in YouTube land, Dan here from Geekast Radio doing another comic book review. I am coming from a new location, so if things sound differently or look differently, that is why. But it is the mark of a special occasion with the release of Batman number 50. And there's been a lot of conversation regarding Batman number 50, as you would expect. But a, a new wrinkle of that conversation was how the book was spoiled for many people due to the release of the New York Times article that came out on Sunday before this was released. But... Ultimately, what I want to do is I will try to avoid spoilers to begin with, but I will, in order to talk about this in a comprehensive manner, because that does deal with overall, like the quality for the book for many people, is get into what exactly happened, at least by the end of this book. But what was, I think, really intriguing about this book, and overall, I really enjoyed this. I know a lot of people are very split on the run of Tom King, and I've been fascinated with it. I haven't loved every single issue or every single arc. But the through line for me that is kind of has me coming back each time is that uh, I like that Batman is the centerpiece of his own book and his own story. I feel often with Batman, uh, especially the last 10 years or so, it's often he, he kind of gets lost in the shuffle, oddly enough. It's all about whatever crazy scheme the, vin the villain is going through or some crazy plan. It's where he's just reacting or he's a piece of that puzzle trying to solve it. This has been since really, you know, the last, say, 25 issues or so, uh, since really the button, more of a character study about the character of Batman. And I, I'm a person that, when it comes to the way I enjoy stories, I enjoy character first. Like, plot and storyline to me is not all that important. I could care less about continuity connections and things of that nature. When I can get a book that kind of centers on characters that I'm interested in, or if they can deep dive into those characters, and look at how they relate to one another in themselves, that was what appeals to me. And that's one thing I thought with Batman, Tom King has done quite well. And especially with the results of the button and having to kind of deal with the ramifications of having his own father, the person that inspired him to become Batman, tell him to stop being Batman. And what does that do for him? And we've seen throughout this, really the last, that since that issue, trying to find some level of normalcy. Uh, but not really knowing what that is and, and seeking for happiness. And then um, for, for you know most people, normalcy is relationships, families. And he's had that bat family, but not in the sense of kind of sharing your life with another person, even though he has Damien, I guess. Uh, but so th I, I've enjoyed the back and forth between that Batman and Catwoman when they've been able to get into that a little bit more. And this issue, the way it's, it's almost set up like a prose style-esque book with... Um, as you can see, uh, with multiple artists coming in and kind of just, it's designed where they're each page, one page is a letter from Bruce Wayne or Batman to Selena Kyle slash Cat Catwoman. The other is Catwoman slash uh, Selena Kyle writing to Batman slash Bruce Wayne. And we kind of find that out by the end that these are two letters that they're writing towards one another. But fortunately, uh, if those letters are actually shared, <laughs> it kind of goes throughout the history of them, their relationship with one another, um, inter intertwined in between this is the actual story of them deciding to kind of get married and, and make that decision of, okay, we're actually going to do it on a rooftop because you know, that's where we will always be, or on those rooftops. And intercut w within that are these, you know, basically uh, page long splash pages of you know, artists throughout the history of Batman, um, from most recent artists of so Frank Miller to you know, Neil Adams. Pretty much anyone that's still alive and has a major impact, sorry about that, who has had a major impact on Batman has a page in here. And I thought that was a good way of celebrating the, the, the kind of the history of both of these characters, the legacy, getting into kind of the, the weird convoluted aspects of their relationship. And as I mentioned, I'm not huge into continuity connections, but I, I thought at least this, even though it was kind of connecting those pieces, there was purpose behind it, and it was more, again, character-driven, their relationships with one another. And the, the key theme you see throughout their communication is eyes. You know, they will talk about the eyes and how Catwoman's are open, like her mask, or she's, you know, she's seeing the world, uh, and it's part, uh, uh, kind of uh, purposeful, and how it was the eyes that clued in Batman to the fact that Catwoman is not like the superstitious lot of supervillains he's normally he's normally used to and how Catwoman you know he, what she saw in, in the man of Bruce Wayne Batman at first he seemed this ruggish man running into a world he didn't really understand with brute force trying to fix it but not understanding it and how the, those 
tended to kind of adjust throughout time and how they were able to really better understand one another and how they were this kind of this interlocking force that is forever attracted and retracted to one another. You know, they, they obviously have so much in common, yet so part of what drives them is so separates them continuously. And it was just interesting seeing their kind of the way that they relate to one another, the, how with Catwoman, she, you know, she needs to get close to people. She needs to read people. I mean, she, that, that's one of her greatest skills is understanding people and where they're coming from, where Batman, he knows stories. He knows he can l use clues to tell a story about who someone is, but the inner workings of how people function, it's something that he kind of struggles with. He, like he, he's very distant from individuals. He even himself, really, that he's driven himself away from kind of being a man and being this figure. Um, and in a way, he's seeking perfection in a way no one else can. Bat, you know, Catwoman makes a remark that he's perfect. He's better than us in certain instances. And as it goes out, there are some really touching moments, I would say, throughout the writing. I love King, King's, King's writing and how the styles would really differ between the voice of Batman and Catwoman, yet it still kind of felt like they were coming from the same place. It's, I think, an underrated skill for sure. Um, and I, also just the art throughout. I mean, I didn't love every single page, and it was a little... It was strange. I didn't expect it to be like this, reading it, that you were getting all these different artists, but I thought it made a lot of sense, and... Um, ultimately, and this is where we kind of get into spoilers, uh, where we get into, you know, finally Catwoman and Batman making that decision to finally marry one another or have that wedding. And one of the best moments in this entire book, uh, which I think even if the haters would agree, um, was the moment between Bruce Wayne and Alfred. Uh, it's, it's this touching moment of, of them kind of come, him kind of realizing that Alfred's been the person that's always there. And it's a touching moment between both of them, but I also think it's saying a lot more. And again, spoiler, it's by the end we see that Catwoman decides not to marry Bruce Wayne. Um, and the reasoning behind it is a, is a reasoning that I think people would understand, where she's afraid that you know their, their matching of one another, their, their perfection together would lead to complacency. And it would ultimately <laughs> take away... Uh, that drive for Bruce Wayne to be Batman, um, and that, that is really what he's destined to be, and that's what he needs to be. But what? And I, at first, I thought, okay, that makes sense. I'm kind of where I expected it to go, but I think there's a little bit more to it than that. In the sense of, I think Catwoman's wrong, and I think what this issue was showing, especially with the communication of Bruce Wayne, is that that understanding that idea that Bruce Wayne needs to be Batman may not be the case. And going back all the way to the I Am Suicide that need to be this hero to, to kind of take away everything and just focus on being Batman is kind of destroying him as a, as a person. And he has finally gotten to the place where he can forgive himself or whatever he needs to do to seek happiness. There's a, a line that, you know, that uh, he asked basically Alfred, can he be happy? And Alfred says to him, he has to be in order to you know go on the way he is. So, Although I think Catwoman had the best intentions, it's almost like that ultimate Romeo and Juliet situation where you're making a choice based upon love, but you just don't have all that information that you need, and you end up causing more heartache, even though your decision was that out of love and compassion. Um, so I found that, like, at least that's the way I, I personally took it, the way that he's, in, in the sense of where we're seeing there is, this is a Batman that is opening up in ways he didn't before, and he's not necessarily, uh, even going back to the Brewster Gold storyline, when you look at that, where before this it was the man who had everything that, that needed to be Batman, and how Brewster Gold was telling him that he, that he made a world where Bruce Wayne never became Batman, and he never ended up being happy. He, never, like, he wanted to show him that his parents dying was, was, a, was a good thing. But I think what we're seeing is that that may not be the case. I think that we're seeing that Bruce Wayne can find happiness with, with the right person. If you look back at the annual that he did, uh, Tom King did with uh, Lee Weeks, that like future S storyline where Catwoman and Batman were together. Uh, it seems like he was able to find that balance. So, but, and we find that at the end of this book that there are certain forces at play here that may be driving this idea uh, or perhaps the people behind it all. And I'll be honest, that's like the one thing I'm not super excited about. I'm waiting to see what exactly that all means. 
um, the idea that, oh, this was person was behind it the entire time. It's kind of like one of those tropes we see where it's always oh, it entirely a dream or they were really dead. And it, 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 things can tend to fall apart the more you try to say that. And Or was it just someone taking advantage of a situation that was presented to them? I think that's not super clear yet. I think you know, people are maybe jumping to conclusions. I'm, I'm letting that play, play out before I, I truly judge it. It does make you rethink things a little bit, but I just thought the kind of the approach of this and the idea of, 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 of developing Batman in a way where that balance between Bruce Wayne and Batman can be found, but then have that ultimate tragedy of it not happening because the person you love is making a decision that, yeah, here we go. This isn't actually, if I do this, this will actually end up hurting you. But what if that decision isn't right? And I think that seems to be being lost in all this. People seem to be freaking out that, oh, this was a build-up to nothing. And I, I don't necessarily agree with that. Drama is best found in tragedy, typically. You know, when everything is content, thing, bad things happen. And to me, is that Tom King, like, meta commentary saying that, you know, if we had a perfect Batman, he would probably make a better person, but it may not make a better story. I don't know. That's certainly something that to kind of consider. But I do think this, and I've read, we've read this two or three times to try to, you know, piece together all the different elements of it, which is, I don't usually reread a comic all that often, but I found just, you know, a, there seems to be a lot of hints in those two letters that, that, are, that are, that can be taken out of, and I think there's more being said there than just two people explaining their affection for one another. Um, so I, that's what I've liked about this book a lot. And now to me, it's, what's exciting about it is, when you deal with a Batman that got to a point that he so struggled to get to, and then all oh, that's been taken away in an instant. That to me is compelling. Uh, I don't know exactly where it's going. I think Tom King said he has a hundred issue run, and I could kind of see that because this does seem like the beginning of you know a second act or something of that nature. Um, we'll see, but I, I enjoyed it. Like I said, I do have that apprehension of the idea of a secret force being behind all this. A little bit iffy, but... I'll, I'll wait and see what that has in, in store. Uh, but ultimately, I thought that was a really solid issue. And uh, I know some people may not like the, the build-up and everything around it to and ultimately get an answer that isn't what they want. But I would just say, you know, getting answers what you want don't always lead to better stories. Um, and <laughs> maybe it was because we had that X-Men Gold wedding as of late, and that kind of did a similar thing. And, and now we're getting this again. It's where people tend to just can't get married. Uh, we'll see. Um, but I don't know. I, I ultimately... Would re recommend reading this, even if you're not a huge Tom King fan, just for for one, this appreciation of appreciation of all these artists coming together for this one issue and kind of taking chances with the style of comic book st storytelling, which is something I feel like Tom King has been doing more so than merely many writers right now. I maybe the only other person that comes close is Jeff Lemire, just based upon the sheer number of books he's putting out. And I think this is another example of that. So I'd be interested to know if people who absolutely did hate this book. I'd love to hear your thoughts of, of why. What what those who hate Tom King's run, I've heard many reasons why. I'm curious to hear more. Does this change your mind? I'd be really interested, too, if someone hated Tom King's run but actually liked this. Uh, I don't know if that's possible. Maybe it is. Who knows? But if you want to listen more to me, you can check out my podcast, Comic Concierge. Keep tuned to this YouTube channel or go to geekhouseradio.com. Uh, we have tons of stuff there covering a variety of different topics from comic books, movies, TV shows, technology, all that great stuff. But for now, remember that comics are for everyone. The key is finding the right one. Until next time, thanks for watching.